Howdy guys, welcome back. I think you guys know what server we're playing on right now, so no need to mention that again, as I frequently do all the time in the intro. But, we are up here today at Concorp. We are cutting down some trees, because we need to restock the USS... I always want to say Concorp, but it's the USS Undercut. And so we're out here cutting down trees, we need to restock that, and we also have a new shop in Concorp as well. So we need to take a look at that, and show you guys what that is. In the meantime, though, we have a bow to name. I promised last time that those of you who left comments with the hashtag bow name in the comments section, I would pick one of your names, not one of your name suggestions, and name this bow. And so that is exactly what we're going to do right now. Uh, we are currently at 1,239 phantom kills. And speaking of phantoms, there they are. Let's just see if we can slay these guys. Maybe if we can get it in before before they they burn. If you can hit them before they they perish, then you still get the kill. Come on now. Almost. Fly over this way. Oh, that was close. Come on. Oh, I don't think I can get him. Maybe I can't. Nope. I got one. I got one. All right. One out of two is not bad. Let's name this bow. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of the bow and the bow contest winner is... The Compound Bow, suggested by AMAG, and congratulations to you, you are the lucky winner, Compound Bow will be the name. It's like Compound Bow, but for the convex, because the first word. Everybody's going to be like, oh, it's misspelled, but no, it's spelled right. So there we go, guys, the Compound Bow is the name selected. Thank you, everybody who left really creative names, you guys are really creative. Uh, some of my other favorites were the Convex Cannon. And the Phantom, the Phantom Menace uh, for the, the Phantom Slaying Contest. Speaking of the Phantom Slaying Contest, that is almost over. Uh, we are at 1,240 right now, as you saw just a moment ago, and right here. And so, yeah, just a few more days left. We have the ending scheduled for the 31st, uh, October 31st at midnight. So just another little over a day left. So we got to start slaying phantoms like crazy here. We gotta make a final push to win this contest, because there is no second place. There is no second place, there is no third place. It's winner take all, guys. It's winner take all. Anyways, I'm gonna cut down a few more trees out here, and then we're gonna head to the USS Undercut and restock the shop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Since the last time we were at the Concorp Wood Farm chopping wood, a lot has happened. To make a long story short, we have been visited by Death himself twice. Not once, but twice. So what happened here, we basically were fighting charge creepers in a storm, as one does. And the charge creeper exploded, killing me and causing me to lose absolutely everything. So you can see, I don't have any of the good stuff we used to have. Uh, all this stuff I've been trying to get back in the, in the meantime. And we've gotten some books here. Uh, where are my other books at? I think in the, the trading chest. Trying to recover from death, his crazy shenanigans that this death guy plays on us all the time. We had to go and do some trading, so I've been doing a lot of trading and such. And luckily I got that charge creeper's head. And we also got two other creeper heads uh, for our troubles. However, death himself was not happy that I took that charge creeper's head. And so we actually got a visit from death himself. He didn't send a minion this time. We got a visit from death himself. And let's jump into that footage right now. Cub fan. Hey, ZF, what's up? I am not ZF, I am Death. Okay. Hello. Hey. <laughs> you doing alright? I'm doing okay. It's a little freaky. You're like a you're like a a very dark character with all these I guess chains. Are those chains on your body? Uh yeah, there's some chains. Oh, yeah. Man, that, that's crazy, uh -huh. man. That's crazy. I know. They're, they get a bit annoying, to be honest, but... Are you, am I not scary? Are you meant to be scared of me? Uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean, it would be a little scary if you had, like, a like a hat on or something, like a, like a mask, you know, to hide to hide your face. Well, that's just plain rude. Yeah, sorry, man, <laughs> sorry. It's just a little suggestion, I mean, you don't have to follow it, I mean... I mean, it's, oh, a, little, it's a little scary, it's a little taking... It's, it's more like taking aback rather than scary. Fine, good. You're mean, <laughs> but I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, I've got a little challenge for you if you if you want to hear it. Oh, okay. I'm going around all the hermits and asking them to complete my challenge as quickly as possible, and the winner will get a very special prize. Okay, what's the challenge? 
Okay, as soon as I tell you, the time is going to begin, so are you, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Reach zero health as quickly as you can. Go. Oh, 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 oh come on, fly. Look at the fly. There we go. Okay. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, yeah, what should you struggle? I got it. I got it. I'm coming in. Here we go. There we go. Beautiful. Finally. Finally. This pleases me greatly. <laughs> that took a long time, actually, man. I'm disappointed. It, it took. Disappointed. It did take quite a long time, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you've you've achieved your goal. Your time has been recorded, and I will let you know how you did awesome. shortly. Awesome, awesome. Hopefully, I did well. All right, man. <laughs> Hopefully, you did. Do you want me to pick your stuff up? Uh, I can probably make it back there. I, uh, yeah, actually, go ahead and t pick it up. Pick it up if you can. Oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm nice. I'll do it for you. Even though you called my face horrible. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. You Thank you. Yep. Thank you for uh, taking part. I'll uh, I'll see you sooner than you think. <laughs> So there we go, guys. Death visited us for Halloween. I don't know how many people can say that, but I feel very privileged. I feel very privileged. Uh, we also got back our stuff now, so you can see, yeah, we got the max level gear now. It took quite a lot of grinding to get all this stuff back. Uh, of course, the spoon is the only thing that actually survived the explosion from the charge creeper. Uh, we got the compound bow too as well, so same in chances we had on the compound bow 1, which lasted all of, like, an hour on the server, so, man, that was, uh... That was quickly, uh, explodified, but, yeah, anyways, let's go ahead and head on out here. We're gonna gather some of this wood we've chopped down recently at the Concorp Wood Farm. So we're gonna gather all this up. We got some in here, we got more in there, and then a little bit more of some other types around here. Stuff like that. So let's go ahead and put this all into the boxes. We're gonna go ahead and restock the USS Undercut. Alright guys, we made it out to the deck of the USS Undercut here, and when we look inside here, you see we're out of stock. So, let's go ahead and fix that. We'll just double click, double shift click right in there, and restock every type of wood here. Gotta make sure we put it in the right chest. There's the oak wood, the birch wood. We got a whole bunch of spruce wood in here, so that will be fairly straightforward to restock. I think this looks like the spruce wood one. There we go. Beautiful. We'll get a couple more of these out of here. There we go. All those. Uh, let's see. This is oak wood. Perfect. Acacia. There we go. Dark oak on this side. Have we sold any of the stripped versions? Does not look like we've sold any stripped versions. But we do have a little bit more to stock up here. So, yeah, there we go. Concorp is now restocked. The USS Undercut is now restocked. And all is right once again with the world. With the USS Undercut restocked, I now want to show you guys the latest Concorp business in the shopping district. And here it is right here. We'll come down to a landing on the runway. Very nice. And welcome guys to Top Gunpowder, the gunpowder shop of Concorp. So this is where we're going to set the, the shop down here. You can see Scar is already coming and built a whole bunch of stuff here. We got a big runway here. We got some hangers on the sides. I've uh, got another smaller hangar up here. He's done some landscaping. We got a air traffic control tower up there. And so it's meant to be like a like an airport because we're going to sell rockets and gunpowder related accessories in this area here. And Scar's also done a little bit of terraforming around here to make it look nice. So that is the latest Concorp shop. So we need to build a we actually need to build a creeper farm now to make some gunpowder happen here. Otherwise, <laughs> it's a shop without anything to sell, which isn't a shop at all. So yeah, we'll have to get going on that relatively soon, but this area is looking great. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Scar did a great job with this shop, and soon we will have gunpowder and gunpowder accessories available for purchase at the Top Gunpowder shop right there. So, yeah, looking nice. Looking nice. Just thought I'd mention that. And now let's go ahead and get on back to Concorp. So guys, in case something like a sudden death like that happens again, I think we want to be a little bit more prepared. And the way we do that, I believe, is we need to make some automated farms. So I'm thinking today at the factory here, we're going to make a automatic melon and pumpkin farm. Because, yeah, that way if we die unexpectedly and lose some stuff, like I did, uh, yeah, you can come here, pick up some melons and pumpkins, and then go to trade it away for some enchanted books in the uh, iTrade trading hall. So... Yeah, that would be a good thing to have here, I think. So let me go ahead and put down like a floor here. I need to sort of plan out how I'm going to do this, but we're going to make a melon pumpkin farm today here at the factory. 
All right, guys, so I think I've decided what I'm going to do for this Melon and Pumpkin Farm. So we're going to go with the smashing Melon and Pumpkin Farm design. Uh, in case you guys are unfamiliar with smashing, you are about to be informed about what it is. Basically, it's an amazing Melon and Pumpkin Farm designed initially by Cass at the Mizuma Games channel. I'll provide a link in the description for this. And it's basically the best Melon and Pumpkin Farm ever made in history ever. Um, even in real life. Like, this tops everything. It basically uses an observer, like the observer face, to punch the melons and pumpkins into the ground, into the, uh, into the dirt. And then, yeah, they get collected that way, and it's just hilarious. It's, it's amazing. Trust me, you guys are going to love it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so this is the same design I used in Season 5, but if you find the best, why use anything else? It is the absolute best by far. Uh, it's also the fastest melon and pumpkin farm in the game right now. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put those two, two 9x9s of that right here. Uh, I think we should have enough space here, and we'll have, like, a little bit of an area to, like, walk in between them here. I think that should be good. We'll probably have to put the, like, this in the ground, though. So we'll probably put it at level 25, which is what I'm at right now. Yeah, that should work. Then down below, we're going to have some hoppers leading from these two farms. They'll lead probably just, like, over here into this area. And then... Uh, down below, we have some space to work with down here. So probably like somewhere around this dirt block, we'll have the shulker box loader uh, for the melon and pumpkin farm. And then we'll put those, those full shulker boxes of melons and pumpkins, we'll put those into the water stream and that will take it up uh, that way. Now we'll also probably need to have on the second layer up here a indicator similar to what we have on that on the cactus farm, like, to let us know when the, the shulker boxes are full and when we need to restock. And then we also might want to have, like, a shutoff mechanism for this. Actually, we definitely do want to have a shutoff mechanism for this thing because it's going to be so fast that if we don't have a shutoff mechanism, it'll quickly overflow and we'll have a bunch of entities around here, which would cause some lag. So we don't want that for sure. So, yeah, we're going to have to implement some type of shutoff system, which would be cool. We're going to have, you know, some exposed redstone here, like wires maybe, you know, going here and there to uh, to make it more, like, factory-like than the cactus farm was. So, that's the plan here, I think. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good plan. I need to gather a bunch of, you know, observers and stuff and pistons and slime blocks and all that sort of stuff. So, I'm going to go ahead and get on that, and I'll be back once we made some progress. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we now have the first farm complete. So this is the first 9x9. We'll build a second 9x9 over here. But I just want to show you guys this thing in action here. So you can see yeah, a lot of the melon and pumpkin stems are still growing up, so you don't have harvesting happening just yet. But uh, what will happen is whenever we place down a pumpkin or melon or whenever it grows in these slots here, uh, watch what happens. Smash. 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 <laughs> So, yeah, the Milliner Pumpkin literally gets smashed by this Observer face, which is hilarious. And, yeah, it gets smashed into the floor, at which point it's picked up by hoppers underneath. Because, basically, the block goes into this block, and then it shoots out into the farmland blocks on the sides, which are not full blocks. So, they actually uh, are not full blocks, so hoppers can pick up items thrown onto them, like this, as you can see. They get picked up by the hoppers underneath. And yeah, it happens on all these things. So this one, smashed. This one, smashed. This one, smashed. <laughs> but of course, I don't have hoppers under all these yet. I need to actually put some down. Uh, so essentially, the collection mechanism is just going to be hoppers down here. So if we get on down here. Um, yeah, we have a few hoppers down here. And yeah, these are going to be basically collecting the items uh, on the farmland. And so we should have a few items, yeah, right in there. So, yeah, that's basically how the farm works. Like I said, just an amazing design. Uh, and so basically what's happening here is the signal goes through this observer, through this uh, slime block, powers this, uh, this uh, what do you call it, this <laughs> piston here. The piston arm extends, the observer detects that, then there's a redstone... There's a redstone dust on top of this observer here, which activates these droppers. Once the droppers activate, the observer detects that and extends the piston downward, smashing the piston, uh, smashing the uh, the, <laughs> the observer down rather, and that's what breaks the uh, the block. So it sort of goes in like a zigzag pattern here, and it actually activates all these because sometimes you can have 
Um, very rarely you can have like a pumpkin or melon grow instantly after the first one's broken. So that way you have, if you have more than one attached to the same, uh, to the same circuit, basically, uh, it'll fix itself if that ever happens. So there we go, guys. The smashing melon and pumpkin farm right there. So now all we have to do is build a second one. Also, quick update on the Phantom Race. Green is gaining rapidly on us, so we got to do some Phantom Slaying at night here. Uh, he slayed like, I don't know, maybe like 300 Phantoms today. So, yeah, we got to do some Phantom Slaying, keep our lead. Uh, I think Cleo is still at around 800 or so. Um, and there's only, as of right now, I think two days left. So, yeah, got to keep slaying those Phantoms, guys. Got to keep slaying those Phantoms. Anyways, I'll go ahead and start to build this and slay some Phantoms at night, and I'll be back. Alright guys, so we now have the second farm complete. You can see the first farm is now going pretty much at full speed. We should see a couple melons and pumpkins be smashed here in just a few seconds. Uh, it's usually pretty quick. Uh, each one of these gets about a thousand items per hour. So we should be getting close to, like just under a double chest per hour of items. Yeah, you saw a couple of those things smashed down right there. And let's go see how much we have from this already. I'm guessing it's probably quite a bit. Just make our way right down here, and we're going to take this thing out here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, not too bad. Decent amount already, and more coming in here. Yeah, there we go. Another pumpkin coming in. So, yeah, now what we need to do, we need to go ahead and we need to come up with a shutoff switch for this. So, basically, all we need to do is strongly power the blocks up here. So, if I get up here, we should see... Some redstone dust, so we're just going to put like blocks above here and strongly power these blocks. And so there, yeah, there's a couple spots where we have to power. Not too many, actually. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start that, and I'll be back once that is done. Alright, guys, so we now have ourselves a shutoff mechanism up here. If I just get on up here, you can see it's pretty straightforward. It's just a simple redstone line with some repeaters leading off to power the redstone dust on top of those observers. And so now, if I flick a lever over here, the entire thing will lock. So let's just get on down here. There we go, right there. And so if I flick this lever now... Boom! Farm is now shut down, and no melons or pumpkins can grow in this area now at this time. So, yeah, this shuts down both farms pretty easily, and then we can turn them all back on. Just by doing something like that, and it does like the wave right there, <laughs> uh, before turning the farmers back on. And yeah, instantly it starts working again, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and shut these off real quick here. It's a pretty cool animation when it shuts off as well, like it sort of like cascades outward, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to shut the farms off for now. We do want to make the shutoff automatic, so after, you know, it fills up all the shulker boxes available, we want it to automatically shut off, so we'll add that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have our melon and pumpkin farm complete. And you can see some smashification going on around here, and also in this farm right over here as well. Uh, so, yeah, the collection system is done, the on-off system is done, and let me sort of show you what I've done here. So, obviously we still have the manual on-off switch right here, so if I flick this downward, yeah, everything turns off. But, we now have a more powerful system that overrides this manual switch. So, actually, we don't really even need this, but I'm just going to keep it in there, because why not? Um, so, yeah, we now have an automatic shutoff system if we don't have storage for this thing. And so, yeah, you can see right here, this is our chest. This is where we store, or put in the, uh, the shulker boxes right here. And then, if we need to put in more, this lamp will turn on, and the system will shut down. So, let me just show you how that thing works. So, we get on down here, we can take a look at the redstone. So, here's the hopper line right here. It probably would have been better to put in a minecart system, but oh well, <laughs> it's fine. We have the iron, so it's all good. Um, so here's all the redstone back here. You can see down here our shulker box filling up right here, and when this gets to the second to last slot, uh, then it will break automatically and be shipped off. Um, so yeah, that's that, and we also have some shulker boxes in here. Now, if I just get rid of some stuff that is not needed at the moment. And we take out these shulker boxes, so there's one in there. Now if I take the next one out, this line will shut down, and this line is actually what controls the lamp up here, 
and also turns on and off the farm. So this is the automatic detection. So basically, uh, if we run out of shulker boxes, like the last one is dispensed, then the whole farm right there, you heard it, just shuts off. And then the lamp up here will also indicate we need to put in more shulker boxes. So if I get up here, you can see the lamp has turned on, so we need to put in more shulker boxes, and the entire farm has turned off. And at this point, the manual switch doesn't really do anything. Uh, because the, uh, the automatic system overrides the manual system. So now if I just put in more shulker boxes, we now have room to store stuff, and the farm is back online. And now, once again, the manual system will work. So if I manually shut it off now, it does indeed work, and I manually turn it back on. There we go. So that is the whole system there. I think it's working pretty well. Uh, the only other things we have left to do in this room... I would like to change the aesthetics a little bit. Uh, I think we're probably going to change the floor here. I'm thinking perhaps it would be cool to maybe like put like brown terracotta down here or something, or maybe even like coarse dirt. Like maybe make it like a like a dirt room. That could be kind of a cool thing to have in like a factory. And then we might want to put something on the sides of this as well, like some glass maybe or something. Uh, that could also be interesting. Of course, we have to do the walls, the granite, solid granite polished walls. Uh, we have to make uh, a yeah, system around this thing, like a like a wall right here or so, to uh, basically separate this stuff because we don't want to be able we don't want to be able to see any redstone back here. Uh, besides what we sort of interact with with the chest and the light and the uh, lever and stuff. So yeah, um, yeah, that's the only other thing we have to do basically is just aesthetics. So. Let's go ahead and I'll do that and I'll be back. Alright guys, so here we have it. We got the whole farm decorated now. So we got some brown terracotta for the floor. We got some brown carpets covering up the sea lanterns for lighting uh, on the floor as well. Uh, then we have the polished granite on the walls. So that's all the way around on the walls, which I think looks good with the, uh, the brown terracotta, surprisingly. We also made sort of like these farms like modularized. So we put... Some spruce stairs down uh, around both like the uh, the dirt down here and the the second layer of the farm right here and yeah we also put down black stained glass because I think that looks pretty nifty with the uh, with the brown so it's sort of like a dark color scheme and yeah that is pretty much it guys uh, we also changed up the the line up here to uh, to spruce slabs I'm not sure we're gonna keep that line it would be it might be good if we like moved it to maybe like over here somewhere or like on top of this thing but yeah for now I think it's fine for now I think it's fine um, and then here's the chest over here so yeah that's what we got right there so yeah I'm liking it guys let me know what you guys think about it um, and of course we put down the door over here and then this just leads back to the maintenance area back here which is a little bit smaller than it is uh, down below here but yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. We also filled in some stuff back here, so this is a little bit more tidy. And pretty much all the redstone, I think, is underneath here. And sort of hidden away in this in this room back here, yeah. Yeah, so most of it's hidden away in this room back here. Let's see how much we got in here. Oh, we must have had one box, at least one box break. Let's see, let's go up to the top and see how many we have. So we'll just get on through here, get on through here. And then we'll just go on up to the top. You can see what it looks like from above. This is what it's looking like from above. We got some of the stairs and the slabs on top to prevent mob spawning, of course. But let's just get up here and see if we got any, any shulker boxes full yet. I'm guessing we probably have a couple. Yeah, it looks like we got three. So we got one there, one there, and one there. And some of these are only 21 because with melons and pumpkins both going into the same shulker box, you have to break it uh, when it's 14 signal strength rather than 15 so yeah some of these might have one slot uh, one slot uh, open but yeah still pretty much totally full um, so yeah pretty cool pretty cool so anyways guys I think that is going to have to be it for me today very happy we got this automatic melon and pumpkin farm now set and all ready to go so that is another automatic farm checked off the list and yeah I really love this farm <laughs> I love the smashing I love the smashing um, so, yeah, with that, guys, I think that's going to have to be it for me today. Uh, we are ending today at 1481 on the Phantom Count, so, yeah, just a couple days left on that. Anyways, guys, that'll be it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Cub.
Goodbye.